Today's video is going to cover screen replacement on the Euracom Sky X9. We're going to assume that anyone that undertakes this project will have a basic understanding of computer repair and knows how to do simple things like remove their CPU heatsink, video cards and heatsinks, hard drives, and components of that nature. We will skip past demonstration of screw removal and those components and move quickly into the meat of the presentation as it relates to removal of the screen. You may need to replace your screen due to damage. Perhaps you want to upgrade to 4K and this video is going to help you do that. Um, you may want to work on a static free surface. Here I'm using an anti-static mat. If you don't use that you'll want to be sure to keep yourself grounded at all times to the chassis because we do not want any electronic uh, static discharge. So to begin you need to remove the screws from the bottom. There's three across the back, three across the center, and then three across the front of the laptop. A total of nine. Those have already been removed. Grasp the front grills and pull the lower cover away from the chassis. It has some snaps. It may be snug the first time but it'll come off fairly easy. To access the screen, we're going to have to take off a number of major components and quite a few screws. We're going to have to remove the CPU heatsink. We're going to have to remove the video cards in their heatsinks, the battery. There's a total of 30 screws around the perimeter. In addition to one screw next to the video memory, we need to disconnect the subwoofer cable and some ribbon cables that are underneath the battery. There's a plate across the rear that has three screws that will also need to be removed. They are, this is the plate that um, covers the power jack, HDMI, and uh, USB port on the rear. Between the uh, memory and the subwoofer, you will find one screw that holds the keyboard. The motherboard is marked KB. There's a hole next to the CPU heatsink in between the CPU fan and heatsink where we will use a screwdriver to press upward on the keyboard to lift it away from the palm rest. Let's push the screwdriver right through that hole and I'll demonstrate for you how that works. You'll see a couple of pieces of tape that I have on the keyboard. I take this machine apart frequently. Those are there for my convenience. You will not see that on your machine. But I'm going to show you using the screwdriver how we lift the keyboard away from the palm rest. Pushing up through that hole, it allows you to get your fingers underneath the edge of the keyboard near the screen. You slide them across to the right hand side and it lifts them away from tabs that hold it securely in the palm rest. And you can slide the keyboard toward the screen to remove it. There are also some magnets that help hold the, the keyboard in place. It'll kind of suck it down. You slide the keyboard toward the screen and release the tabs at the bottom and lay it face down onto the palm rest. So a number of components we need to remove here, two screws, one in the center, one on the far right hand side, a ribbon cable, there's also a speaker cable, it's in behind the ribbon cable that has to be disconnected. You also have a ribbon cable in the center, one on the far right hand side, and the two ribbon cables for the keyboard. Now you do not have to remove their memory modules, the Wi-Fi module, or either of the M.2 SSD drives. So let's look at some other things you need to be aware of regarding the teardown. There are a total of 31 screws of the same size in the bottom of the chassis that hold the frame to the underside of the palm rest. Those are all the same size. That includes one for the keyboard, there are two screws that are a unique size that are for the two and a half inch SSD drives. I want to make a note of those as well. The screws that hold the rear plate on the back of the laptop are also a unique size. You'll keep them separated. Those are the ones that I showed you a moment ago with the plate across the back around the power jack, USB, and HDMI ports. So you want to keep those screws separated. So there are also five silver screws. There are three under the battery. One with the plus sign is a smaller screw, so you'll want to keep track of that. 
There's one silver screw underneath the master video card right behind the PCIe slot number one. That they have a plus sign next to them. There's one in the very back too that's silver and there's also a plus sign that's on the motherboard. It's covered up by a uh, plastic shield. You see a plus sign there, a plus sign there. Bear in mind that the one under the battery with the plus sign is a smaller screw than the other four. If you lift up the shield, you can see that there's a little plus sign on the motherboard next to that one too. So you have a total of five silver screws for the same size. One has slightly smaller threads under the battery. So please make note of that and keep them separated. So to quickly review, the three screws on the rear plate are a different size than the 31 screws. You have two screws for the two and a half inch drives that are a different size, as well as five silver screws that are a different size, one of which is slightly smaller. Now what I haven't removed yet that I want to demonstrate for you is the removal of the subwoofer cable and the ribbon cables on the bottom side. So let's go ahead and get started with that. You want to use something like a set of tweezers because these cables are small and hard to manage with your fingers. I'm going to do the best I can to demonstrate it in this video, but subwoofer cable holds some slight pressure up and grab the plastic clip. Now you'll notice that on the plastic clip there are um, some contacts that are silver and there's also a raised plastic edge that fits in a groove in the socket where it slides in. Um, the raised edge and the silver contacts point toward the subwoofer when you go to reassemble it. So remember that and it'll make the reassembly much easier. The contacts go toward the subwoofer. So that's all there is to that. Th there are three ribbon cables here. Each of them have a flap type retainer that hinges up and away from the cable on the side that it goes into the socket. There's a very narrow one that is a little bit more difficult to manage just because of its um, small size. Um, you'll want to use some tweezers for this, especially because it's hard to manage otherwise. So there's three of those. The, the sound card or the audio board that's on, on the palm rest will trap these cables. So we're going to remove the two wider cables from the audio card and leave them attached to the motherboard. So what we'll do is we'll lift up that plastic flap that'll release the cable and we can slide it out. The smaller cable we're going to leave attached to the motherboard end because the opposite end is not accessible. So as we get started with that um, you want to be very careful because these flaps are very fragile. So I'm going to zoom in here so you can get a better look at them. So as we use these tweezers, it's easier to actually use your thumbnail to lift them up. But you'll, you'll want to grab the edge of it and hinge it upward away from the ribbon cable so that whenever it's released, it'll be standing up straight perpendicular from the motherboard. So there you can see that it's standing up straight now. On the ribbon cable itself, you'll see that each ribbon cable has a horizontal line that's printed on it. That helps you make sure that the cable is inserted all the way and not inserted crooked. Whenever that is that retainer is laid down, flat, it will either conceal that line or almost conceal it and they will be parallel to one another and it lets you know that it's inserted correctly. So there's also a clear plastic handle that you can grab a hold of on these ribbon cables. So we want to pull, slide the cable away from the connector. And there's the line that I mentioned. It helps you see that it's inserted correctly. So on this other cable, there's a piece of black tape that helps it stay connected to the motherboard. We've moved that retainer up straight. So what we want to do is just peel the tape off that holds it and then slide it back and out of its socket as well. Pretty simple. The more challenging of all the ribbon cables is this small one here. 
you can see the little clear plastic handle that I mentioned you can use to grab a hold of it. Um, going back together with this is a little bit tedious. Um, sorry you can't see this, I just can't get the camera in close enough, but we're going to lift the retainer up so that it's straight and per perpendicular to the motherboard and slide that cable out. It also has a little black line. Oops. Now this is going to get trapped when we reassemble it. It'll be trapped underneath the motherboard. So before we go back together I'll, I'll demonstrate that for you. See that you need to pull it out before you cinch the screws down. You don't want to damage the cable. So if you haven't already done so, you're going to want to remove the three silver screws that are right here in this area. Go ahead and take those out if you haven't already done so. Then we'll be ready to flip this thing over and start working on the keyboard side again. And we have a number of ribbon cables to take loose. The first one on the far left, right next to the coin cell battery, it also has a flap that lifts up. Um, just like the ribbon cables on the bottom side. So we'll want to very gently lift that retainer up so that it's perpendicular to the motherboard. Slide that cable out. There are two wide ribbon cables that have a different type of retainer. They're for the keyboard. These retainers slide toward the screen away from the cable. The cable goes underneath it and then it slides in and locks it in place. So I'm going to show you how we'll get those off. You want to be very gentle with these. Let me zoom in and get you a better view real quick. Hopefully you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So you'll want to push on either side of this retainer. Move it toward the, toward the screen. And that will release the cable. Push on each side evenly, very gently can't buy these if you break them so just be gentle no reason to break them but they don't require much effort at all so that cable will slide right out when the retainer is released and we have a very similar retainer that's black in color that's right behind that and it releases the same way slide it toward the screen that'll release the cable just very gently and that cable is going to just slide right out of there. Takes very little effort. So this cable here actually slides underneath the black plastic on the motherboard side of the plastic. When you go to put it back in, it goes underneath the black plastic across the bottom. Now the other cable that's closer to the screen slides in on top of the retainer. You see that there's a little offset on each side. So it slides in between the socket and the top surface of the white plastic retainer that you can see. Bear that in mind when you put them back together or else the keyboard's not going to work right. So we've got that off. We'll set it off to the side. 